Um, this is not only a bad end game, I would say. And I think that the fact that you don't have to clear the end game does not change the point that she thinks it's less appealing, in my opinion. Alright, so I've been sent this. Apparently Hex Juice has had another horrendous take. I don't know if it's true. I've been apparently this is an L take, so let's let's look into it. Uh first of all, I know Hex who's Legion's gaming. I don't know who Legion Gaming is, I'm so sorry. Twitch partner, YouTube partner, two channel. Oh, I see. Damn, that's a long tongue. Holy crap. What a tongue do? Alright, what did Hex say? What horrendous thing did Hex say? I think that Honkai Star Rail is going to suffer because it doesn't appeal well to new players. How do you get new players into a turn-based game with an extreme emphasis on meta play when there are more gameplay-focused games releasing like Wuwa, ZZZ and Zero Promilia? Okay! I don't think she's wrong. I I don't think she's wrong. Yeah, I don't think she, I don't think she's wrong. The the thing with Star Rail and what we've been seeing, there's been a trend with Star Rail gameplay, where every time there's a new character, obviously the end game content is geared toward them, right? And it has been the case for Genshin and other gacha game. It's always that way because they want you to spend for the new character, which is gonna get a massive advantage for, um, you know, the pure fiction at the, of the moment, the MOC of the moment, the apocalyptic shadow of the moment. And because it's a turn-based game, it means there is less emphasis on player skill, uh, on player skill. Because it's turn-based, it is way more a stat check than it is a, oh, skill expression, right? When you play Wuthering Waves or even Genshin, even if the game is not that hard, there's way more space for skill expression. Because at the end of the day, uh, especially in a game like Wuthering Waves, um, if you're insane at the game, even if your characters are worse than other characters, you will still be able to clear content because you're simply that good. When you play a turn-based game, if you don't have the right stats, you can't really win because there is so many ways that you can press the two buttons of each character in a certain order. So if you don't have the right stats or if you don't have the right characters that will make set combat easier, then you will feel like you just don't have what it takes to clear the content. Is that necessarily bad? No, I don't think so. I don't think you have to be able to clear the content right away. Uh, like a new player doesn't have to clear the entirety of the content. Uh, a new player is not expected to do so. Um, and that's it. That's that's what I think. It's not a big problem if you can't clear everything. That said, it is true that there is a big emphasis on meta play because all of the quote-unquote endgame content is geared towards certain characters. And it more and more feels like if you don't have the right characters, if you don't have the very good stats, then it's going to be really hard for you. To, to clear that content. Um, and I could see some people being a bit dejected by that. Um, especially when it takes a lot of investment to actually build some characters. And then you build a character. And let's say you spend a lot of time building Dr. Ratio, which is x favorite character. And you build that full-up team, which is very expensive because you need a lot of characters to be built uh, to get a proper good Dr. Ratio team. You need a lot of five star, you need topaz, stuff like that. And that can be pretty rough, right? Um, and then suddenly there's an MOC where full up attack is incredibly bad and you need a lot of like break effects you, or like dot damage and you just don't have it. Then you, what do you do? Well, you're kind of screwed. You need to build a, a second team. And then what if the next MOC is geared towards super break and you don't have any break DPS? You have your dot team and you have your, your follow-up team. And you can use them, but your result is just not going to be that good. And so it feels kind of bad. Because it feels like there's no way for you to actually outplay the enemies. Um, because, well, 
because of how it functions at the base. Intrinsically, you just need to have the right characters, you need to be able to hit the enemy's weaknesses, and you need to have the good stat. The end. So, uh, I, I don't think this is a horrible take. And keep in mind, just because the game doesn't necessarily appeal directly to new players, doesn't mean it's a bad game. But I, I think it's possible it's going to suffer. It's possible. I, I, I think so. Uh, the game, I think, is a bit less casual. Casual is a big word. Okay, I, I think the game is fine for casual players. Uh, but I think if you want to clear the content, you need way more investment than other games. Especially Genshin. Wuthering Wave to some extent. Um, Wuthering Wave, I feel like, needs some amount of investment. Uh, whether it's, uh, you know, farming or time. Uh, but, like, if you put the time to learn the game and, like, get very good with some characters, you can clear the content, and that's it. There's no problem with that. Uh, what does she say? Uh, muting this thread because it's giving me Scarlet Brain Rot. Uh, thank you. What's Scarlet Brain Rot? I don't know. Thank you to those who actually gave insight into the question I asked. What I learned, all you exceed at getting new players via word of mouth and stellar marketing. The story will appeal to some, and the unobtrusive... An obtrusive nature of a mobile turn-based game will appeal to others. Do I think this is nicely enough to keep the game's current level of success long-term? Eh. Maybe specifically because it's Hoyo and they are very good at keeping people around their games. I think it's less appealing to gamers outside of gacha mobile games and other gacha that come out to that appeal better to gamers in general might take up more market share. For the rest of you, as always, Twitter, the only place where we'll... Well, well-articulated sentences still get misinterpreted. You can say, I like pancakes, and somebody will say, so you hate waffles. No, bitch, that's a whole new sentence. What the fuck is you talking about? True. Um, so, I, I, I entirely agree with her, actually. Um, it's maybe not as bad as she thinks. It might be a little bit of, like, uh, negativity, as in, like, maybe a bit of pessimism. But I do agree that turn-based... For the longest time, and even to this day, a lot of people don't want to play some JRPGs because they're turn-based. They just don't like turn-based. So the fact that, like, turn-based, that the game is turn-based is already, by default, gonna turn off some people. That's just how it is. And also, because it's a turn-based gacha game, and so they always want to monetize their new characters, they're gonna have a big advantage, and you are gonna be at a big disadvantage if you don't get them. So yeah, I do agree that it might not be the best way moving forward, especially if you're trying to get non-endemic players into your community, into your player base. Um, meanwhile, a game like Genshin, a game like Watering Waves, a game like Azure Promelia are gonna appeal to a wider audience because even if people don't want to do the hard content, there is already a lot of things to do through exploration. You, I mean, there is not that much things to do in Star Rail apart from combat. The exploration is very limited because it's not an open world. And is that bad? No. But that's not going to be for everybody. Um, so, yeah, it is what it is. I don't think the game is going to fail. Um, I, I think the game is doing very well. Um, I, I think it will keep make a lot of money. Uh, but I definitely agree that it probably has less appeal than other games. That's it. All right, let's see what the uh, the big take was here. The big, uh, I disagree with you. Uh, I love you, Hex, but this is an L take, LOL. You're not meant to beat everything in the game, end game as a new player right away. It's the same in any RPG or any MMO or any gacha game. I mean, I kind of agree, but, like, I guess he took the idea that, like, because there's an emphasis on meta play, this is only about the... Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure, but also I think she's talked about a lot of things. Um, this is not only about endgame, I would say. And I think that the fact that you don't have to clear the endgame does not change the point that she thinks it's less appealing, in my opinion. Anyone who says the game doesn't appeal well to new player is not building other units. You don't need every meta unit to clear content. A lot of content can be done with a single 5-star DPS and a bunch of 4-star support. I literally just auto-ed MC 11 and 12 while one of my team is having Akron and all the other units were 4-star. Pella, Gallagher, and Tingyun. 
Yeah, but these are still like top tier characters to be real. Can you do that with Akron, Servo, uh, Lynx, and I don't know. Um, Tree? I, I don't know. I don't know. I do not go for a massive amount of dupes either on my 5 star, I for the most part pull 1 and done, even on my free to play account I'm having no issues because it's all about knowing who you want to save for and who you want to use your jade on to better your account. Also if someone is going to try to argue my point say well what if you don't have Akron on the Firefly then you save your jade for the next OP DPS unit that releases or you wait for a rerun. This is literally how gacha games have been since they became a thing. And if you're a new player and have been playing the game for over 3 to 4 months you still can't do any endgame stuff, skill issue. Um. I feel like this is not really the point of the whole uh, conversation. I feel like this is a bit like, oh, well, I'm good at the game and I build like good four stars. Like, X didn't say that like only five stars are good at the game. And he literally like, those are all very meta units. It's not like he's building a random team. And yeah, it's achievable for a lot of people. But also, a lot of people don't have this kind of information and will feel like there's a there's a barrier to entry here. There's a barrier to learn and they will struggle. Not everybody has the same amount of knowledge that people do. I think a lot of people tend to underestimate the amount of knowledge they have and the amount of mastery they have on a game. Uh, a person uh, that does not have knowledge when it comes to turn-based game or does not have a lot of knowledge when it comes to gacha games, will struggle. Especially if it's both. Meanwhile, a game like Genshin, or Wuthering Wave, or probably Azure Promelia, even if you don't know anything, the game is appealing enough that you can have a good time, uh, even if you don't know what you're doing. Because yeah, obviously, if you, don't, if you don't know what you're doing, you're not gonna succeed to the same extent that a player that does will, and you might also have issues with endgame content. But... Uh, when it comes to the difficulty, even if you build your team bad, you can still brute force a lot of things. I think that Star Rail, you can't really brute force thing unless your characters are very well built. And some people don't have the patience to do that. Some people do not want to spend weeks and weeks and weeks to farm one artifact set for one character. So, I don't know, I think this is slightly beside the point. Uh, because Hex is just talking about the appeal of the game, and Legion is literally saying, well, get good. <laughs> it's not that bad, just build good characters. And also, I mean, when he says, what if I don't have Akron the Firefly? Just save your Jade and pull for the next OP DPS. This is literally what she's saying. It's geared toward meta, so the next OP DPS is gonna be the meta. And that's the thing, if you don't have those good characters, you're going to struggle more than other people. Is that a big deal? No, not really. But it is what it is. Like, if you start the game right now and get Firefly and don't have Ruin Mei, you're probably gonna struggle a little bit. I mean, you can clear with that Ruin Mei, it's just gonna be way worse. So when it comes to MOC 12 and Apocalyptic Shadows, it's gonna be harder. So yeah, I, I, I don't really see this. Uh, it, I, I think it's really besides the point. Yeah, there it is, exactly. My post had nothing to do with the meta or issues with it, bestie. What I'm talking about is getting new players into the game. I'm saying that the game is highly niched and asking how it will bring new players to sustain its success long term. I would argue that Watering Wave has the same problem though, lol. It's been a month and people, especially casuals, cannot clear even half of the tower game modes or even remotely come close to beating the hologram fights. Most new players in WoW already got burnt out of the exploration, especially if they came from Genshin or Tower Fantasy or Hell, even Breath of the Wild, because it's just the same shit with a new coat of paint. Okay. I can't speak on the other future games because I haven't got my hands on them myself, but unless they do something vastly different, it will be the same for those games as well. I... 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 Okay, let, let's just like... Eve, okay. I think this is a situation where literally she is talking about the appeal of the game. That is HSR. I think saying, yeah, but Watering Wave is the same. It's not really a good response, honestly. First of all, I don't think it's a good response. Because it doesn't tackle the actually topic. Now, if we really want to compare, 
my point would be that Water and Wave has way more skill expression, and so even if you don't play the meta character, you can still clear the content if you're good enough. So, yes, obviously, that's not going to impact all of the casual players, but maybe the casual players can just enjoy exploring the world, fighting some random mobs, and have a good time. Whereas, I feel like in Star Rail, because there is no exploration, or not that much exploration, people are going to have done all of it very quickly, in my opinion. Um, so I, I just don't agree with that. Um, I, I, I just don't know what's the purpose of, like, comparing them. Okay, you're still talking about the meta, and this post was about HSR. I ask a question, and all anyone can do is point at other games or talk about completely unrelated points. I mean, uh, low-key, I kind of agree. Or oh, high-key, actually. No, I just agree disagree. I disagree with uh, people just, like, pointing to other things. But heck, bestie, you brought up meta in the first place, LMAO, and I'm using the other games as an example to further prove my point. You're saying the Star Rail is in street focus on meta play when, what, when that cannot be further from the truth, lol. You can clear most of, if not all, content in Star Rail with non-meta units. And if anything, I would say that the main, the main focus of Star Rail is the story and the gameplay second, to be honest. I love you, I hope you're not actually getting triggered. Yeah, uh, again, uh, what I said, like, again, what I said is literally the the broad appeal or the potential non-endemic appeal of HSR because it is turn-based and because it, you need certain units to clear the content is gonna be rougher than other games. Like, even if you don't talk about endgame stuff, I've had a lot of people come to me and tell me I can't beat the bug. I can't beat the space station bug. I can't beat the bug that Ruin May made. I can't beat Aventurine. Is this end game? No, this is story. And some people can't do it. And they were like, I can't do it. I don't have a way to break them. I had to tell them, well, maybe you can build Misha. It's going to take a time, a long time, but maybe. So I, I don't think it's just about the end game, just in general. I think it's more niche, the end. I... I, it feels like a weird conversation. They're not talking about the same thing. My point in mentioning meta is that it further niches HSR. Agreed. And your point is what? New players shouldn't be able to finish all the endgame content. I agree and didn't say anything related to that. Yeah, it's like a... It's, it kind of feels like an excuse, you know? It's like instead of tackling the main problem that she might be bringing up, they're saying, yeah, but you shouldn't be able to do it. So, you know, who cares? But yeah, that's not how it functions. It doesn't... Just because you're not supposed to do it doesn't mean that the game is suddenly appealing to the, a broader audience. I said I have concerns that HSR might fail to continue to bring in new players, and you said, well, new players shouldn't expect to finish all the content. But yeah. You said it won't attract new players because it's meta-focused and turn-based, which was his point about Endgame. Uh, yeah, I think maybe the meta-focused... I think the meta focus is not the, the main point. I think the turn base is the main aspect of why it might not be appealing to a broader audience. But I think that um, potentially the end game being very meta driven exacerbates the potential issue. Uh, and he said the meta isn't an issue, so it wouldn't be a problem for bringing new players. After all, if a new player don't care about meta, there should not be no problem at all. It feels like you're attacking about an existing problem. Yeah, I just, uh, goalpost moving. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I, I don't think she's really moving the goalpost that much. Like, her main point has not been tackled whatsoever. I mean, she did mention the meta, which, I mean, uh, okay, as soon as she mentioned the meta, it, it was going to trigger some people. Um... But uh, I maybe the meta part was not the best way to go about it. But I do agree. I think the point with the met with her bringing up the meta is that it automatically is going to get people who want to talk about meta and that are wanting to prove that the meta is not necessary to follow. Um, but that kind of diverts from the the main point, which is the appeal of the game. Um, but that's beside the point anyway. Like, just because you can still clear the content without playing meta doesn't mean that the game requires you to get a stat check. 
uh, which is less the case in games like Genshin. In Genshin, if you have shit substats in your artifact, you can still clear the content, which is not the case in this game. You just can't. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I think this is a, all a little bit silly. Um, meta play is just a reality of the gacha business model, but for new players, they won't feel the meta until they're chasing the last few MOC stars, so as long as they like the turn-based combat or character design, they'll probably still give the game a try, meta stuff aside. This is fair to be honest. I still just think that the game is very niche and with more competition releasing, it will be hard to keep up. Agreed. However, the point that is easy, fast to keep up with is, with is a good one that I didn't consider. So you can fit alongside other gachas. Very true. That is very true. I think you're quite yet it might get players by just having the Hoyaverse tag with it. When it comes to your content exposure, it's very easy to come across HSR and think that alone should get new players. Games like Warren's is easy more for everyone. Most people who care about the Hoyaverse tag already knows about HSR and have made a decision regarding their interest in playing it. I'm not convinced that it's enough. I, 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 I really agree with that. I think a lot of players are playing HSR because it's Hoyaverse. A lot of players are going to try ZZZ because it's Hoyaverse. Uh, now, I think that like a button mashy game is going to be more appealing in general uh, because it's going to be easier to get into it pretty easily. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. This is interesting because this is way more nuanced. And it talks about, like, other ways to appeal to players. The thing is, in the turn-based gacha genre, HSR is one of the best games, so it being niche doesn't hurt at all. Well, okay, let's put it this way. I understand it doesn't hurt as much. Do you think that Star Rail would be... Okay, let's put it this way. If Star Rail was action combat in an open world with the same setting, I think it would be more popular than it is right now. Obviously, this is speculation, but I think it might be more popular because people love fucking open world. They love exploring. Now, the question is, does it need to be? No. Does it need to be mainstream? No. And I think the interesting thing with HSR and what Oyoverse is doing is that they're trying to tackle a lot of different genres, a lot of different niche so that they have the actual whole verse. So that they say, oh, you don't like open world? Here's a turn-based. You don't like uh, having to go through a lot of uh, corridors and like, you know, you want to get straight to the action? Here's the lesson zero. Oh, you want something more chill, more visual novel? You want some romance? Here's Tears of Themis. They, they are trying to give you everything so that if there's something that doesn't cater to you, you have something that caters to you. And it's also the idea of, hey, you want a change of pace? Why not take a break from Genshin and play some HSR? And then you can go back to Genshin. And I think this this works, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but the, at, the end, the, at the end of the day, whether it still works is not really the question. I think the question is, who is going to get into it? Is it going to work for a massive audience? And I don't know about that. Uh, so, um, I, I, I don't think you can look at, listen, I've already made my point several times. I kind of agree with x -Juice. I think the game does not have as much as an appeal than other open world games, Gacha, like Genshin, Wuwa, Zero Promila is going to have, Project Mugen, games like that instantly have a big appeal and instantly have people very interested in it. That's it. It's not about it's still gonna work. I'm not saying that the game is not gonna work. Nobody is saying that. We're just saying it might be rough in the long run to attract new players that are non-endemic, that are not into the Hoyerverse sphere, that are not in the gacha sphere. Do you think someone that does not play turn-based game and that does not play gacha game will look at Star Rail and be like, wow, that looks amazing, I want to give it a try. I think a lot of people would see it and be like, no. Meanwhile, people who don't play gacha games might look at Genshin Impact or Zero Promilia and be like, wow, that looks amazing. Because it looks like other games that are very mainstream, like Breath of the Wild. That's my point. Uh, you can agree to disagree. That's all fine, honestly. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if I'm an absolute uh, fucking uh, stupid person. And uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers!